Hello friends, welcome to the ServiceNow world and today we'll see part 18 of ServiceNow developer interview question and answer series. So without any delay, let's go to the first question. So the first question is difference between batch update set and merge update set. So the merge update set means merging all changes are moved into same update set and in case of batch update set it creates parent child relationship hence changes re remain in their respective update set so i'll tell you like uh, in merge update set like uh, we are merging all the update set in a single update update set okay while in batch update set it's create a parent child relationship so like there one uh, parent update set will be there and then all the related child update set will be there now the second point is that like uh, the important point with the batch update set is that if we back out of any update set is is requires it's easy to back out means so like in batch update set we know like it's a parent child relationship so it's easy to back out right but in case of merge update set we have to back out the entire update set so that is that this point you have to kept in mind okay so let's go to the next question so the next question is what is the use of stop processing option in inbound action so when you creating a inbound email action you have seen one checkbox is there stop processing so what is the use of that so in the docs what they have written like if we select this checkbox system will prevent running additional inbound email action after this action occurs in other words we can also say that like uh, all inbound action process according to the order value defined. So when we stop processing checkbox is checked, it will stop processing for the inbound email action. So in a very simple word, I can explain like uh, if we check the stop processing checkbox, what will happen once whatever the uh, whatever the inbound action we have created, if that will get executed, then no other inbound email action get triggered after that okay so now move to the next question in this question why it's not recommended to use background scripts so maybe like uh, it this question will be like uh, they will ask in a different way like what are the limitations of background scripts uh, or you can say what are disadvantages of background script so the answer will be same okay so like uh, why it's not recommended the first point is we cannot check the pro progress of background script so we cannot check right second point is we cannot kill or stop background script execution unless we have to go to active transaction via other session and kill it so thus this second point might be a like very a point of a debate so just uh, answer very care carefully like we cannot kill the background script execution but if we end the session and if we log in with the new session then we have to go to the actual transaction and kill it okay next point is background script will run in foreground it means the current session will be blocked until script execution gets completed and the last point is it just for your note background script are free from you know, free from javascript can negatively impact data and system performance so if you if you're running any complex uh, script in background script just run it very carefully because it might be negatively impact your system performance okay now move to the next question so the next question is what is sla and matrix so sla is a uh, sla stands for service level agreement and it is a record which defines a set of amount of time for a task to reach a certain condition and if the task does not reach the condition by a set of a set of amount of time then it is marked as breached so it's like a agreement between the service provider and the client where we have to set like amount of time like in this particular time we will, we will deliver this service and if we are unable to deliver it then it will marked as breached okay 
example is that let's say like if there is a p1 sla is there and for we have and we have raised a, we got a p1 incident and then for that p1 incident uh, the p1 sla is time is 15 minutes and if if it if it's get completed within 15 minutes then it's fine but if it's not get completed within 15 minutes then the sla will breach so you will see that like in sla you will get one field is there is breached there 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 will be become true okay and what is metric so metric measures and evaluates the effectiveness of it service management process so for example is that a metric could measure the effectiveness of incident resolution by calculating how long it takes to resolve an incident so basically it's measure like effectiveness or measure calculating the a performance of overall team so then we are using matrix okay so now we are moving to the next question so the next question is what are the different parameters of level in on change client script this is the most important question asked so just remember it okay so there are total five parameters are available and below are the names the first one is control second one is old value third is new value fourth is is loading fifth is is template so these are different parameters are there so maybe they will ask uh, the use case of that like uh, why we are using control or old value new value so if you know in detail you just uh, refer the service now docs okay so now move to the next question so the next question is where we can check whether upgrade is done or not so when you say in your introduction itself like you have or you mentioned in your cv like you have worked on upgrade so this might be the question like it's a it's like a basic question so like where we can check the upgrade whether uh, whether that is done or not so you just please say we can go to the upgrade monitor and check the check the progress of the upgrade and once the upgrade is finished we can check the sub there 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 itself we can check the summary okay now move to the next question so in the last video i have asked like uh, what is the important factor to remember when a user is creating a catalog variable so basically it's not user it's a like it's for developer so we have to remember like catalog variables are global global by default okay so for the today's videos question is what is an import set so if you know the answer please write in the comment box Till that time, thank you, God bless you all.